All right, here are solutions for problem 28 for the GRE subject math practice exam. Uh, so we have two functions, f and g here, and f is just some one-to-one, -one, so I can talk about its inverse positive valued function on r. Okay, fine, it's differentiable at this point anyways. Um, and g is g of x is square root of x, where x greater than or equal to zero. And we're asked which of the following is false. So what I like to do is kind of sketch some pictures and get an idea of what the hell's going on here. So the first piece of information that I have is that f is differentiable at x equals 1, and then in the xy plane, this line is tangent to the graph at x equals 1. So you might recognize this as point-slope form of a line. This is describing a line that has a slope of 3 that passes through the point 1, 4. So here's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. We're talking about a line that goes through this point with a slope of three. Uh, one, see if I can count three. So maybe in a different color. Here's my tangent line right there. So I don't know what the function looks like. Um, I do know that it's differentiable at this point and that it's one to one, so I can talk about its inverse. Uh, but all I know is that it's tangent at this point. So this first statement here, f prime of one equals three. Well, that's certainly true. Right, because that's exactly what I just drew here. This is saying that the slope of the tangent line to my function f at the point one is equal to three. Yep, that comes from this three right here. This is certainly a true statement. Uh, the next statement gets into the inverse function, f inverse. What about its derivative? Well, you gotta be a little bit careful here. You don't know too much about the inverse function. You know that it exists because f is one to one. Uh, and because f goes to the point one, four, f inverse must go through the point 4, 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, so it goes through this point right here. Uh, and because the slope of the tangent line to f is 3, then the slope of the tangent line to f inverse at the point 4 must be the reciprocal of that 1 third, uh, so this ends up being a true statement as well. And the easiest way to see that is if you think about the inverse function, its graph looks a lot like the graph of the function, except it's reflected over the line y equals x. So I don't know what the graph is doing at this point, but I do know that its slope is 3. And so if I kind of take that infinitely small portion of the graph and move it down here to talk about its inverse, um, its slope will be 1 third. Uh, so that's a true statement. What about fg prime? Well, what you want to recognize here is the product rule fg prime of 1 is equal to f prime of 1 times g of 1 plus g prime of 1 times f of 1. Uh, so let's go and plug in all those values. f prime of 1, well we already figured out in part a that that's equal to 3. g of 1, well g of x is the square root of x, so g of 1 would be the square root of 1, which is just 1 g prime of 1. Well, I got g of x written here. You might be able to figure out g prime of x without writing it out, but just for the sake of completion, I'll write it all out here. I use the power rule, bring that 1 half down in front, subtract 1 from the exponent. You get something that looks like this. In other words, 1 over 2 root x. Uh, so if I plug 1 into that thing to figure out g prime of 1, I get 1 over 2 times the square root of 1, aka 1 half, times f of 1, uh, f of 1 is asking me about the height of the graph here when x equals 1, and that must be equal to 4, um, because I know my graph goes through this point if this line right here is tangent to my graph at x equals 1. And if you calculate this thing, you get 3 plus 2, aka 5, so c is true as well. What about g of f prime of 1? Well, now you're thinking chain rule. So this is equal to g prime of f of 1 times f prime of 1. Uh, and that is equal to g prime of f of 1, as I commented on earlier, is equal to 4, times f prime of 1. And I guess I don't even need to write f prime of 1 because I figured out above that that's equal to 3. And g prime of 4 is asking me what will come out if I put 4 into this thing. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, so I get a quarter there. So I get 1 fourth times 3, uh, which is certainly not equal to 1 half. Right? That's equal to 3 fourths. So this is a false statement here. Uh, it makes me feel better about marking something as false 
when I show that everything else is true. So, well, you don't need to do it. I'm going to go one step further and figure out g of f of 1. No derivatives here, so I don't need any chain rule. Uh, all I got to do is figure out what is g of, let's see, f of 1. We figured out before that f of 1 is equal to 4. So it's asking me what is g of 4. Well, g of 4 is the square root of 4, aka 2. So that's a true story. And the answer to this question would be D.